Hello, uh, I'm Richard Raffin. Uh, in this video, you're going to see me uh, take a core which I saved from the middle of a larger bowl a few weeks ago. Uh, still very wet. Uh, the tree was growing about six weeks ago. And uh, I'm going to make these what I call wavy bowls. They're thin bowls which go through the microwave oven um, and so they distort. This is a piece of green um, casuarina. It's the uh, center saved from a larger bowl. Uh, main feature is that there's a knot in the bottom. Now that in the long term might split. Uh, we will just see when we see it. So first thing is to get rid of any splits and to make a recess here so that I can rechuck it. Uh, on the chuck, so just get some of the inside out. Half inch spindle gouge. We have a clean cut up on the edge there, so I can see along the pith where the splits are. And yep, so that needs to come down to, oh, unfortunately, about half an inch below the present rim so it's want to get rid of the splits nice little shoulder on the inside for the chuck jaws. I can do that with the, the guard or you can do it with a square end. So that goes round and on to what are the uh, I think the 55 millimeter jaws, shark jaws, on a Vic Mark chuck. Now this is going to be finished off between centers, so uh, I'm provided I've got a foot I can grab accurately. That's all I need at this stage, and the foot will be slightly larger than the foot I need. All want to end up with. So just screw that up. Check for splits, which are going to be uh, still. There's a little split just there, so I could think in terms of filling that once the whole thing's moved. Uh, but no, it's not really my nature to make split bowls or bowls with splits. Right, oh, just means we're going to have a smaller bowl. But I do need to make sure that I can grip the foot in a chuck. So, provided my foot's larger than that, I'm going to be all right, which it will be. So, three eighths. Bull gouge, that's half an inch diameter, three flutes. Just need a small shoulder 
for the jaws to go up against. And the chuck. And that will do. And as this is going between centres, Leave a little white dot in the middle. So take a little bit more out of, uh, out of there, and I'll do that with the shear scraping. I think so I might get a slightly cleaner cut. Pretty good anyway. Just to kind of squeeze it along the rest. Ah, it's going to be green turned. Uh, wondering about some little grooves or something on it just to emphasize the um, the movement so this is a uh, number 18 thread chaser so the cap will not go too hard it's really pushing it into the bottom there not sure I'm going to have room to play with those sand this when I've turned it round. Wrong chuck. So these are the smallest of the uh, shark jaws. Sliding up to the little shoulder I left. It should run true. Right, three it's roll guard. There's a very sharp edge out here, so just get rid of that. Now I do need to remember that I've got grooves on the back of this. Support the back of the cut.
fairly bright day outside so it's not uh, not ideal for this light but that feels fairly thin so uh, it'll probably be alright it's under an eighth of an inch anyway just take a little ripple out of there this was a lighter Shear scraper, just use flat. Not going to get around that corner, so I've got to use the big one. Good, lean on to that with 180 grit. Now, this is wet. So the friction will dry off the surface as you can see. There's a little knot there which might split. And that main one down there, so I anticipate having to uh, have dust beginning to come off. On the outside I don't sand the beads. And that's already dry on the outside. Or dry enough to sand anyway. So just supporting the the sanding, this is pretty thin. Some fresh stuff down on the corner. And the gunk will generally break off. get back to the good abrasive underneath. Now this is 240 grit. Right, so this now gets reverse chuck so I can turn off the base. And I can probably do it straight on to this with some padding. Turn the foot off, turn away the chuck marks with a, uh, a 3 8 spindle gouge, half inch diameter, I think. It's 10 mil, so it's 3 8 on the outside. Just need sharpening. It takes longer for my grinder to build up speed and than it does to sharpen the tool. Yeah, but it does make a difference. that up to the bottom of the grooves. Now the bottom will 
need to be flattened at some stage so I'll just undercut that slightly the bottom will definitely go oval and possibly uh, arch up there's the block your vision there but I've got the support of the tail stock. Right, so that was the yellow, which is 180, and there's my two, 240. that uh, comes off with a small chisel um, and the whole thing goes into the microwave so a bowl this size um, I'll try it on a minute just to start with now I can smell it uh, getting warm Uh, which indeed it is. Right, so that can steam off. And it's already beginning to move a little bit. So after a couple of minutes, uh, it's beginning to warp. It's still a bit warm. Um, so I'll make another one of these uh, while this is cooling down then it will go back into the oven. And here are number two. Um, I've already uh, put several steps in as you can see. I actually want a bit more flare out of it than but a bit more movement if the, if the rim is as close to the horizontal. Last one I would have done better to have sanded the bottom. Well it's probably clean enough not to sand but give it a little go. And then I'll use a flat centre rather than the cone so I don't have anything to take away afterwards with a knife or with a, um, a chisel. Three-eighths bowl gouge again. Three-eighths flute. Lost the curve a little bit round there, which so I'll shear scrape. Pull right up on edge. So the, the blade, the edge is actually presented at uh, quite a steep angle. And around 45 degrees anyway. onto this
no splits. This one's going to be much thinner and I'll use without the grooves so I can uh, use this magnet. I've got a stand for it and that will go on behind the uh, behind where I'm turning. See a bit of light coming through there. like quite so much. A few ridges there. I'm looking for my shear scraper. I'm going to use it flat. <coughs> Just stroke the surface and a uh, fair amount of friction on my fingers at the back so get some shavings in there. That's already moved up on the outside so can't go and turn that. A bit more stable down there. Mm, pretty well tools horizontal that needs to tip down slightly on angry on the uh, flat Feels, feels about right anyway. So back with the sanding, but before I do that I put the other little bowl in for another minute. And so I get into my routine doing these bowls. Uh, so I'm drying one while I'm sanding the other. And the 
think it's the combined friction building up the heat and uh, central vehicle force the outside tends to be pretty well dry by the time we get round to it So the other bowl has just come out and is moving quite a bit. Good. Lovely. I'll have a look at that when I finish this. A bit of kind of sticky stuff up here that hasn't dried out right yet otherwise that looks a little bit of picked up grain in there so I'll go backwards for that Oop. backwards Drop the revs a little bit. Um, now the rims undulating a bit, beginning to distort. kind of line there still there so that needs uh, power is going to be the easiest way to deal with that a bit now this time I've got a uh, an old um, tail center which I've ground the end off so it's flat or almost flat and that will act as a good kind of uh, center there without leaving a mark which is the main idea let's watch where it goes out the first at the far side and then Tighten it up. The nice thing with doing this is that I can do whatever shape I like on the bottom. So the um, uh, half inch spindle guard comes to hand. And it's rather easier shaving than that. So this is the three eighths. Easier. Let's make sure there are no stains or teeth marks from the chuck. There's 
a little bit of kind of uh, tong grain or something there so do that with the par goes off to the microwave. So this one is having 90 seconds or has had 90 seconds. Already well on the move which is just what I'm after. It does pitch that up on its side so it steams off a bit faster. Oh, I can lean up against there. And the other one got a small split up in there, uh, but that's no big deal. I, I'm quite happy to fill that with uh, blackened epoxy once the whole thing's dried out. And there's a teeny split where I expected one down in the base, but it's underneath rather than on top. So got away with that one. That's good. And he's warping up quite nicely. So here we are the following morning. Um, these have uh, had several minutes now in the microwave and you can see from the bottom it's it's quite distorted and so I need to flatten that so uh, it sits uh, comfortably on a flat surface and I'm going to do that on a disc sander. Um, but before I do that um, I'm just going to clean the these and some other bowls I've got, uh, just clean them up, ready to flatten the bottom. Now with these bowls, uh, it doesn't show so much on this because I've already taken it away, but on the other little bowl, we have some crystals on the uh, on the end grain here. Um, and I don't know quite what they are, but uh, they come off quite easily with a bit of old Scotch-Brite and they're also on the back and so while I'm at it I'll just go all the way around just so the whole surface has had the same treatment I'm going to do the same on the inside So on the bottom uh, you can see this one there's still a little uh, mark there from the um, from the flat tail center uh, that'll sound out all right. Now this is warped at 35 millimeters to 44. So that's about three eighths of an inch um, and uh, provided I flatten that um, it'll be okay that's fairly flat as is. Uh, or maybe I've already flattened it. I have. That's why that's flat. Uh, this one, back to here. So that has gone from about 34 to 39, but it's pretty rough underneath. And so that just comes up against the uh, disc sander, which I have here. That sits all right. Just need to have a look and see how it looks on the lower level down here. Looks fairly well balanced. Yeah, so that's now ready for oiling. 
These bowls have been finished with boiled linseed oil and you can see that happening in the Oiling Wavy Casuarina Bowls video. Uh, both the bowls are about 130 millimeters diameter which is around 5 inches.